Ardenne have talked about uh, the Netcha as a very large area that our people occupied. And the uh, early Dene, sometimes uh, people think that uh, when the Dene came into this area, there were not people here. But as the old people told the story, there were some people that were occupying land areas and that when the Dene came into the area some 2,000 years ago, those people, many of them became Dene themselves as uh, years passed. The uh, early cliff dwellers are people that became the Neh, and so we have people that lived in, in the uh, places where they had access to water, and river water was what was uh, attractive to these uh, early people that we refer to as cliff dwellers or the Neh. So all the way from just below Grand Junction, coming into Moab and then down through the canyons, all the way down through the Colorado River as it cuts through the sandstones and canyon lines in Utah, and then finally down into Arizona, down into Marble Canyon before it cuts into the Grand Canyon, and as it journeys off into the, uh, toward the Pacific. So Ardenne are the very people that we refer to the, today as cliff dwellers. In the uh, language of our people, we refer to them as Sejakina or Kentachini, some of these clan families or sometimes Seyibagan uh, or Seytahagan. Some of these people, they are no longer a clan group that we recognize, but there were many. And the uh, people that lived along the Colorado River, they had lots of uh, farms in that down on the, in the river bottom. They had fields of corn and squash and melons and even uh, some fruit trees. The um, peaches and uh, apricots, but it was also that you have to know that they had no apple trees and that because apples were not introduced until later on in history. But they did have uh, grapes and other t types of uh, plants that were, grew on the vine, edibles, and the uh, cotton was also uh, harvested down along some areas of the, uh, the river bottom. So our people used the land and the water that was available. And so it is that the uh, Colorado River was a uh, source of water, plenty of water, and many of our people lived down in the river bottom. But uh, as history progressed, sometime around uh, the latter part of uh, the 1930s, we are told that the uh, United States government began to look at the river after uh, the construction of the uh, dam further down the river uh, that would be called the Hoover Dam or the Boulder Dam that would uh, create Lake Mead. But the uh, Dene, in and around the uh, northern part of the Dene Nation, up near present-day uh, Page, Arizona, our people lived in that area and they noticed that uh, the government officials were going up the river from uh, Lee's Ferry. They would launch boats and they would go all the way up to uh, Hyatt uh, Ferry and probably even further on, as, up as far as Cataract Canyons and so on. But uh, as time progressed, sometimes in the mid-1940s, they began, of course, to talk to the uh, local people about the construction of uh, a dam. And they had selected a place there at Glen Canyon. And so they began to talk and negotiate with some of the local leaders. Now, these leaders at that particular time were very um, able men as far as dealing with things in the, in the traditional way of the Dene. And they spoke only uh, the language of our people. Very few of them understood, and he could even converse in English. But uh, there was one young man among the uh, people that was uh, helpful in being an interpreter. And uh, he's the one that told me this story. And by a clan, him and I are brothers. Two generations back, we find out that we have uh, we descended from the same grandma. He shared with me his uh, experience as being an interpreter for those uh, Dene people back in the, the 1940s. And the information he shared with me was that uh, when the government official finally did tell the Dene or the local people that came from uh, Tuba City Gap and uh, Kaibato and uh, Tonalea, Navajo Mountain, even up into the old Jato area near Monument Valley and north of Kayenta, 
but those people were involved, the, the ne local leaders and that, and they were brought to the river, what is near now present-day Page, Arizona, and the uh, government official asked the Navajo leaders, they said, how much of that water do you want? And all of them agreed, we want half of it. Since the boundaries of the Navajo Nation and the other lands and that, it was always divided by the middle of the river. So we want half of that water always. And so there was no question. So they told them, they said, well, when we put a dam to this river, it's going to back up. And we want you to uh, understand that uh, a certain amount of water will be allocated to the Navajo Nation. And so the leader said, we want half of it, which would be 50% but also that the, when the dam is put in, the, the waters will back up on thousands of acres of our land. And so we want to have some compensation for that as well. So we would like to have an additional 3% of that water. And without too much uh, discussion, the government officials agreed that 53% was reasonable. And so the young interpreter shared all this information and with the uh, Navajo leaders and the government officials. And uh, they were promised that when the dam was put in, all of the people would have water and they would have homes uh, if, if they moved out of the canyons. And that they would also be able to have many fields, that they could have corn, squash, and beans, and whatever crop that they wanted to build. And uh, they could even have fruit trees and that, that would include the, uh, the apple and the peaches and the apricot and the uh, Dene were very pleased with the idea of having that avail made available to them with the construction of the dam. And so it was that the government officials left with the, uh, with the understanding of what they had promised uh, would be fulfilled. But some time later, this uh, young man that was the interpreter at the time, when he told me the story, he was very elderly. And uh, he says, when those papers came back, all of the Navajo people that uh, had been at these discussions, they placed their X by their name and they put their thumbprint by uh, their names and uh, approved the agreement, thinking that what was discussed was on that agreement and document. But later on, when they, when they examined those agreements, they found out that they were, were not being allocated the 53% that they were promised, yet they were given 53 acre feet of water and that is not very much at all but there were also a lot of other restrictions as well uh, that apply to those agreements but since the the ne or Navajo population didn't have people that really would be honest with them that uh, they were never made aware of this uh, in, entirely and some of the attorneys and that that uh, the Dene used at the time to help them negotiate these agreements, later on became employees of the, uh, the government in various capacities and that they were being rewarded and uh, for misleading the Dene. And so to this day, the Dene have very little access to the, uh, to the waters of Lake Powell. And the uh, only reward that this young man received is as he got older and when the negotiation for 15 square miles of property was exchanged for the city of Page, the local Mesa is named uh, Manson Mesa. So the young man's last name was uh, Manson. And so the things that we are told is that uh, the way that the, the dam came to be and how the Dene agreed to certain things that were never delivered. And so many, for, for many years after the uh, bridge was constructed and the dam on the, uh, at the Glen Canyon Dam was constructed and the waters backed up, our Dene have had very little access to the, the, the water. There are no farms, there are no orchards, and our people lived for many years without the, the promised homes and the promised water and that that they would receive. And all of that uh, Lake Powell water backed up onto lands and that that our people occupied down in the river bottom. So there's a lot of history in that uh, regarding the uh, agreements and that and the way that the Dene have been uh, let down 
as far as the things that have transpired at Lake Powell. And the uh, people, of course, uh, are not told of all of the things that happen. And those are the things that I was told. <laughs> Hey, thanks for watching our videos. If you like what you see, don't forget to uh, subscribe and hit that notification bell so you never miss one of our uploads. Also, head over to our website, NavajoTraditionalTeachings.com. Sign up for our email list. I can't.